this is Daryl Soul Sax Merle from School Jazz Saxophone Lessons. I'm here with Merlon Devine. How you doing, brother? It's <laughs> good. It's good to be here, man. Thank you so much. Glad to be the uh, first guest for you. Mm -hmm. I am, as he said, uh, a uh, saxophonist. I am originally from Little Rock, Arkansas. We live in the D.C. area, the DMV, and been playing music for like all my life. Uh, 20, 38 years man, on the sax. Yes. And it's been, a, it's been a joy. It's been a joy. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love what you're sharing on on, on social media and how to be expressive. Yeah. And how to, to really speak through your horn and mm -hmm. things that I just love, man. So yeah. keep on. People need to know because I believe we are instruments and when we play, these people should hear and feel mm -hmm. what's in our heart. Yeah. The only way to do that is to be expressive, to use certain techniques and principles to help us relay those messages from our mm -hmm. to the ears of the listener. But you know, to be honest, Daryl, all of us start mm -hmm. the same place. Mm -hmm. We all have to you know, start from the very beginning. Now, of course, it, it accelerates for different ones, depending on what we put into it, what vision we have for that uh, instrument and, and mm -hmm. even our playing. And so that's where things begin to change. But uh, the prerequisite is just breathing. Can you breathe? Right. If you can breathe, you have the ability to learn and to get better. Mm -hmm. You know, so it doesn't matter if you're young or if you're old. You can always grab this instrument and get better from what you were the day before. Mm -hmm. Just by putting in this thing we call practice. Mm -hmm. All right, practice is important. Very. Very important. Uh, for me, I started in the church, like you said, maybe you started as well. Yes. Uh, and my first vision of, or you know, audible vision of music was hearing my mom sing and my sisters and my brothers mm -hmm. sing. And um, before I even played an instrument, it, I was, they were teaching me, uh, or I was yeah. learning mm -hmm. my music theory, my music approach through hearing them sing. Mm -hmm. And when I did finally pick up the horn at the age of 12, those were the lines and the idioms that I began yeah. to try and, and uh, mimic were the things I heard them sing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I have strong roots in the church, those type of the pentatonic bass type mm -hmm. uh, lines, because we hear that prevalent in the church. Yes. Uh, I'm sure in other genres as well, but in our church, growing up in black church, uh, yeah, you know, kind of time scale. Mm -hmm. And so I began to notice that it was very similar and then I started to learn about the relative minor mm -hmm. portion of it, like, whoa, I'm in C, but when I'm in C minor, it feels like I'm in E flat, you know, yeah, major. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is different. You know, so I was beginning to learn just from practicing over and over and over and over again before I even knew the terms of what those things were. Just having a vision of what you want to sound like before you start, I think is very important. Very important. And for me, it was listening to my parents, my mom sing, my sisters and my brother, mm -hmm. uh, they, would, they would sing. And I never had the gift of singing. So for me, I had to find another outlet. Right. The saxophone was my outlet. Uh, and I share this testimony, I've been sharing it, and I will continue to share it until mm -hmm. I'm out of here uh, because I give God glory and, and praise for what He's done in my life. I was born premature, doctors diagnosed with asthma and severe allergies. No, but in anything about playing the saxophone, you need to be able to breathe through your nose mm -hmm. and your mouth, and you need to have lung capacity. And so um, that was challenge for me. First 12 years of my life, so I went through a lot of things, clinics, hospitals, all that kind of stuff. I won't go into the details of that. But my parents always were optimistic and taught me to believe in the power of healing and the power of God to heal us from our diseases and different things that we're facing. And so at the age of 12, I picked up a horn, they prayed for me. Mm -hmm. There I'm telling you, instantly, I was healed. Uh, I haven't dealt with haven't dealt with asthma and allergies thirty eight years. That's how long I've been playing the saxophone. That's how long I've been healed, and, uh, and, and God did a complete work in me right there. I would say to those who say, "Hey, I'm challenging. I'm I'm challenged with asthma or breathing issues, and, and I'm believing God." So I would say, "Keep believing. Mm -hmm. it, it, it may not be immediate for you. It may be over time as you continue to play, as you continue to believe. You know. So uh, for me, that's how it happened." Mm -hmm. 
And I share that testimony as, as, as a way to give others hope to know that situations and circumstances are just that. God is still bigger than all of that. If we trust him, we can have victory in every situation of our life. Circle of breathing is when you appear to not take breaths. Yeah. And it seems like you're able to play long lines or this long note like Kenny G has done for the world. Genesis Book World Records yeah. and held it what, for about three hours. 40, I don't know. What it it yeah, was a long, long time. Yeah. But, um, Insane. Circle of breathing is, you know, it's cool to do, you know, and, and now in most performances, I may do it once or twice yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And so it's, uh, and I learned from Kirk Whaler, man. Mm -hmm. I was at one of his workshops. I've never really used it. Uh, before he talked about it, and mm -hmm. he was explaining to us how he used it and his uh, reading music, and, and he would need to make it uh, uh, play a longer line to get to the next yeah. bar or whatever. He said, so I started circle of breathing, and I saw that oh, wow, this is cool. And so now, and later, he practiced it and practiced it to where he can turn it on, turn it off. Mm -hmm. He can use it not just to play a long note, but just to do longer passages, mm -hmm. uh, just to do certain things, read when you're ready to read. Yeah. And not have to interrupt and stuff. So um, I, I, I approach it more like a uh, Scottish, Scottish bagpipe player. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know they have, of course, you play through the pipe and you make a sound. But the pipe has a valve in it that sends some of the air to a bag that's under the mm -hmm. player's arm. Okay. And as they're playing the pipe, and then some of that air is going into that bag and it fills up. Mm -hmm. And the player can feel it when it's full because his arm is extended now. Yeah. And when the player gets to that position, the player stops breathing and he pushes the bag of air down. Well, that air goes back into the horn, causing the horn to keep making a sound. Mm -hmm. But it also gives the player a time to take a breath. So as he pushes it in, he breathes mm -hmm. in. And then when he gets his lungs drill, he starts playing back into the pipe. And they the that. process starts right over again. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in the right timing, the sound never stops. And it says, some Scott, some bagpipe players, you can hear the intonation go in mm -hmm. and out because they're doing that. Some is so strong, it's so solid because they got the process and the timing. Mm -hmm. So that's really all. My cheeks are that bad. Right. So I'll hold some air as I'm playing, preserve some air, so to speak, in my cheeks. And um, when I'm ready to, to take a breath, I just squeeze that back out, mm -hmm. get to the horn, take a breath in through my nose, mm -hmm. and then the process keeps going as long as I need. Right. So that's how I approach it for me. And so uh, I don't know how do you, I don't know how you approach it, whatever, but that's that's what it works <laughs> for me. Three different ways to make it work, and you just have to find a way for you yeah. if you're going to use it. And then I think the main thing is the timing of when you take your breath and when you push yeah. your breath back into the horn. That exchange yes. has to be, because you don't want your intonation right. to die every time you do that. You want to keep it constant so that the listener really doesn't know right. that the player is taking breaths. Right. You don't want it to become a saxophone trick. It's nice to be able to do that. I have been in situations where I wasn't in church and I knew I needed to make an impact at the moment. Maybe that one solo that night that the band gave me or something, that at some point I hit a high note and I just wanted to hold it. It's nice to be able to do that because in that environment you are trying to entertain people to a degree. And it is a little cheap trick, even though it ain't cheap to learn. A lot of work, a lot of time to perfect. And, and yeah, you're right. It doesn't have a lot of respect uh, right. overall mm -hmm. uh, from the music side. You right. know, of course, the audiences love it, but it's the lead we know that, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, do something else, you know. And so that's kind of where I place it. It's just something that I can do yeah. and I may use here and there. Uh, I, I tend to do it more with with moving passages and yes. not just one note. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's still it's the same technique mm -hmm. to do it with moving passages or just one note. Yes. It's, still, it's still the same approach. Talk technical, technical stuff. We talk testimony. Um, we talk about who he is, what's to come. Well, you know, um, I'm working right now on a couple of projects. I have a new single that will be out uh, later in the year. And uh, we'll be hearing more about that as we you know, get some things wrapped up and start to promote it yeah. on social media. Um, I also did a live band taping mm -hmm. of me and my band 
so that uh, so that'll be done in, in a few weeks and that'll be out there. We'll be putting that out there as well. Uh, you know, just staying busy, traveling, still doing ministry, doing dates, jazz dates, smooth jazz dates. That's, Anything and everything that requires Our channel is about spoof jazz and gospel, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing all of that, and it's been a blessing. So if you want to find him, I know you can go to MerlonDivine.com. Yeah. That's yes. M yeah, and that's M-E-R-L-O-N-D-E-V-I-N-E.com. And then also on all my social media uh, handles, is just Merlon Divine. So Instagram, Merlon Divine. Facebook, Merlon Divine. YouTube, Marlon Divine. All right, TikTok, Marlon Divine. How many CDs you got now? Like six, six albums? Eight, four, eight, eight, I think. Yeah, so one, if, if y'all respect my opinion about some things and you're learning or you're just a fellow saxophonist and you like being part of the channel or coming to the Facebook community group to um, just fellowship, take my word on it. You want to go check out his music and you want to listen to it on Spotify, iTunes, whatever you're doing. Um, you know, if you want to be, be a greater blessing, hey, nowadays people don't like to purchase stuff, but purchase some music. I'm, I'm pretty sure on the website, you might even be able to grab a CD. You yeah. still sell CDs, right? On my website, yeah. Yeah, so you can even grab a CD. I don't know if he signs anything or not. You might have to inbox. I will. <laughs> he I will. said he will sign. Yep. So, support his music, but, you know, nowadays, just getting him in the rotation will definitely support, and that's what we want to do for a lot of our, our comrades, brothers. We want to make sure we're supporting the music, listening to it, learning from it, grabbing what you can grab from it. But then remember, the more you listen to it, the more that's going to bring finances to that, our pockets. So um, let's do that. And we'll try to do the same for you when it becomes your turn, if that's what you choose to do. So we're going we're gonna to sign out with that. You got any last remarks? Man, a few words. Like, you talk about music, you'll talk a little bit. Good. <laughs>